A lot of my books, I've tried to remove the kind of taboo or the negative associations we have with the word like power or with the word ambition. You know, I try and say ambition is a good thing. It means that you have, you, you believe in yourself, you, you, you have some self-love and you believe you're worth something and you want to go out and achieve and, and, and create something worthwhile for other people. So ambition is a, is a positive thing. But so many people are just kind of embarrassed about being a human being, embarrassed about our primate nature, embarrassed about our own aggressive impulse. This is partly why boys are failing in our schools now at a disproportionate yeah. rate, you know. The, the And I see this. there's an assault of the sort that you're describing on the better part of striving masculinity. And, you know, I had a friend who killed himself because he identified his ambition with you know the, the the patriarchal force that's devouring the environment let's say and that's a con that's you know the cause of of historical horror and you might say well no one takes that on to themselves to that degree and that's well you can say that but that you just don't know what the hell you're talking about people take that on to themselves all the time and then they they start to identify the best part of them that strives forward with the destructive impulses of humanity and they're so ashamed because they can't yeah. do anything good then, but in principle, yeah. you know, he tried to be as inoffensive and harmless in every possible way as he possibly could, and it just sucked all the life out well, of him. Well, you end up turning that aggressive energy on yourself is what ends up happening, and that's maybe leads to suicide, the ultimate kind of self-aggression. I know that I personally have, as I said, I definitely have a shadow side. I'm very aggressive and extremely competitive, and I have a lot of anger. So a lot of that, those experiences in my youth made me very angry. But the way I kind of integrated my show, I'm not saying this is a model, but the way I integrated it was through my books. Yeah, so yeah. I kind of, that anger kind of seeps through the material that I write. And I find I can only write when I have that kind of anger. But I don't rant. Mm -hmm. I don't yell and kind of put people down. I kind of channel it into something productive, and something creative. And so Yeah, I me, definitely that's... do that when I'm lecturing. Uh -huh. You know, and people have commented, you know, some of the people who've criticized me that I'm an angry person, and which isn't true, uh, but it's definitely that anger, that capacity for anger definitely is something that gives you force and it, and it can push and it, anger definitely. So psychophysiologically, so imagine that this is obviously a thought experiment. But imagine you're chasing a cat with a broom. Well, the cat's going to run from the broom. But if you corner the cat with the broom, it will attack you, even though it's just a cat. Well, and the reason for that is that fear will facilitate either freezing or escape. Right. But sometimes fear isn't the right response, and anger will suppress fear. And so one of the tools that we have at our disposal psychologically is anger as a an antidote to the terror that would otherwise freeze.